Severino, the small animal pharmacist here at the Texas A&M Veterinary Teaching Hospital. And we are inside the pharmacy, or drug room, as most veterinary clinics call it. This is Davida, one of our senior pharmacy technicians. Hi. She's been here for much longer than I have. Um, but every day we get uh, prescriptions from veterinarians for their patients, and we have to decipher exactly what it is that they want and exactly what it is their patient needs. This is where you guys come in. We have to take their order and make it into a prescription with the proper label and the proper medication. But before we get into details about how to make that proper label, there's a few things we need to show you. Some of the formulations that we need to talk about are medications that you give orally. So oral liquids, oral tablets and capsules. Some of you guys have probably had these before. Whenever you have an oral medication, you want to say that you're going to give it by mouth. Um, here's your capsule. Here's your tablet. And we also have eye medication. So if you have a solution, you'd want to say instill a few drops, instill one or two drops in the affected eye. If you have an ointment, you would say instill a strip or instill a ribbon along the eye. If you have an eye medication or even an oral medication that's a suspension, that means you have to shake it up. If you don't shake it up before or afterwards, you're not going to give the proper amount of medication. We also have injectable products, which you need to take a needle to actually get into the medication and then a needle to inject. So in your directions, you would say inject subcutaneously or IM, but you wouldn't say give by injection. You would say inject. So those are the formulations, the main formulations that we have here at Texas A&M. Hi, my name is Tia Nivot. I'm the pharmacy director here at the Teaching Hospital at AM, and I'd like to introduce you to Brindia Patel. She is our pharmacy student from the University of Texas, and she's just almost finished her six week rotation with us. Brindia is going to tell you about labels and what you expect on a label. Brindia? Okay, so like Amy said, there are a few important things that you really want to make sure you have on your label. I'm going to go over one of the labels that we have for our patients. This will not only make sure that your owners understand how to give the medication to your patients, but it'll also make sure that you follow the legal requirements for your prescriptions. You want to make sure you have the date that the prescription was ordered, the name of the patient, the name of the prescribing veterinarian, and the species of animal that you're treating. Most importantly, you want to ensure that you have the drug information and make sure that it's the correct drug information. Specifically, make sure you have the name, strength, and quantity noted on the label. Now, sometimes you may have to calculate the quantity based on what the doctor tells you. Also, make sure you write the directions clearly on the label, the number of refills, and any special precautions when taking the medication. One important thing to note on the label is they should say for veterinary use only. This is one way that we can distinguish our veterinary prescriptions from our human prescriptions. Oftentimes in veterinary pharmacy, we try to use a different colored prescription vial or a cap that may have an animal on it. What this does is it helps us distinguish our animal prescriptions from our human prescriptions. Oh, just remember though, you may not have a different colored vial. Sometimes it may look similar to your actual human prescription. But read the label. On that label, remember, like I said, it says, for veterinary use only. Okay, let's spend a little bit of time talking about abbreviations. Um, you might have seen prescriptions that your doctor has given you to take to the pharmacy, and it really all looks like gobbledygook on there. Well, what these doctors are using is prescription abbreviations. And Binda, I am showing you here uh, just a small example of something she pulled off the internet. You can Google it and find many more of these. She also highlighted the ones that are very commonly used um, on the sheet of paper. Um, but if you, if somebody would write these on a prescription, many times they are very confusing. So my word of caution is if you ever get a prescription from a prescriber and you cannot read what, they, what they're writing or it doesn't make sense in the picture of the patient's prescription that you see, you really need to question this. There's no, there's no second guessing any time when it comes to a patient's prescription. You'd rather look as if you don't know what you're doing and call the doctor and make sure your patient gets the right medicine than guessing what it is. There are also veterinarian-only abbreviations that people, that the human pharmacists have never seen and it is easy to misinterpret. For example, 
The veterinarians are very commonly used the abbreviation SID for one time a day. It makes a lot of sense because it means comes from the Latin sit in diem, which means one time a day. Um, the human pharmacists are not taught that. They are taught twice a day and three times a day, and it is very often confused with four times a day. And there has been quite a few instances where animals have been overdosed due to this uh, due to this issue. So we really do not recommend using any of the medications for safety purposes. Now that you guys have a good idea of all the details, like what goes on a label and what SIG codes are and how to interpret them, also what kind of formulations we have. Now let's take a real life look at a veterinarian who writes a prescription and how we interpret that to make a good label. Dr. Diesel, this is Paisley. She's been shaking her head for three days. Three days, okay. Let's take a look at those ears, girl. Oh, that's awfully swollen. Ooh. Paisley, looks like you have some infection there. You probably need to treat that infection, huh? That's your ear. Okay, hold on. Okay, Amanda, would you mind taking Paisley back to her owner? Um, let her know she's got some ear infection and we're gonna go ahead and prescribe some Surland drops for her. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, I wrote the prescription already in here. If you could pass that off to the pharmacy so they could get that into the computer, that would be great. Ma'am, thank you. I'm assuming you guys are doing this right now. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. That's how the world of veterinary medicine meets the world of pharmacy, and that's how we make a proper label for a patient. You guys want to be sure that patient safety comes first. If you get down the road and you have questions, always find your friendly pharmacist and ask. Thank you.